I don't have time to go into all that. Because I might then end up breaking my promise here. But there could have been a problem with this king. There could have been a problem with this particular king, the king of Israel. Of not willing to defend his nation. But willing to defend his own personal bank accounts. Because when the king of Syria said, I'm coming after even your natural resources. I'm coming after your mineral resources. I'm coming after your gold and I'm coming after your diamonds. He didn't care about all that. But when the king of Syria said, I'm now coming into your own personal account. Then the king was ready to fight. He wasn't ready to fight for his people. He was only ready to fight for his own personal gain. There was a problem with the king of Israel. <laughs> Anything to do with the nation, come and get it. But anything to do with my own personal investment, you can't touch it. He doesn't care whether the nation is that broke as long as he is prosperous. All he's concerned about is his own palace. Come and get every other jewelry, every other thing from the citizens, but don't touch my financial status. Our find time to work on that one later. But listen to this now. And now the king of Syria is coming to fight. And here comes a prophet with a message from God. And he said to King Ahab, get ready to fight. Look at all these people. Don't be afraid of their number. For the Lord shall fight on your behalf. You are going to defeat the Syrians. And he said, how am I going to do that? <laughs> and God gave the king a strategy. And God said to Ahab, select 232 uh, young generals so have 232 and have 7,000 people that are ready to fight and to defend what belongs to them. 7,000 men that are ready to defend their blessing. And let those 232 uh, young generals lead them into the battle. And you are going to conquer. And then Ahab asked the question, prophet of God, so who is going to lead this fight? And then the prophet said, you are going to lead the fight. And you shall have victory over that enemy. And then they went and they fought. Can you imagine that the king of Syria had invited about 32 other kings to come and help him? And this is just Israel and 232 young, even junior commanders and 7,000 men that were determined to fight a 
prophet to deliver a message. Nezuru coming against more than 32 kings with all their armies combined and yet still victory was guaranteed and God is saying don't continue looking at their number don't look at their ammunition don't gaze at their AK-47 for the Lord your God shall fight for you get ready to enter get ready to enter what you are going to be doing next year is not to focus on the strength of your enemy. You are going to focus on God and enjoy as he fight for you. The Bible says they shall surely gather but not by me. And the Bible goes on to say, and for your sake, they Bible. shall be scattered. Now let me, let me, let me, let me, let me jump to the real issue here. And they fought against the Syrians, and they conquered. They defeated the enemy. And as they were now thinking of celebrating, here comes another prophet again. And then the prophet said, it's not time for you to rejoice. Because the same enemy that you have defeated, you have killed every soldier of his but except the king. So next year again, get ready for another fight. Because he's coming back again. So get ready for another fight. And the prophet said to the king, secure yourself, prepare yourself, more training, seek the face of the Lord, for the same king that you fought this year is coming again next year. Look at this now. Patarira. Look at this now. Patarira. Look at this now. Patarira. And the following year, exactly at the time that the prophet had prophesied, then Ben Hadad, the king of Syria, gathered together his soldiers, and they did a post mortem trying to find out why they were defeated last year. And listen to these suggestions that were coming out now. And all of his soldiers agreed upon one thing. And they said we have assessed we have analyzed there is only one reason why we got defeated last year it is because their God is the God of the mountains so this time as we are going to fight against Israel let us be very careful never to try to fight them on top of mountains because that is where their God is in charge of. Let us lure them, let us invite them to the valley. Their God is the God of higher places. Probably they might have looked into history and heard about how Abraham was called by God to the mountain to sacrifice his only son. 
They might have done a research and heard about how God invited Moses either to Horeb or to Mount Sinai. They might have done a research and they realized that when fire came down after Elijah had prayed, it wasn't in the valley, it was right on top of Mount Carmel. So they've now established that their God is the God of mountains. And there's no history whatsoever of God giving victory to his people on, in valleys. So they said this time around, let's not go on top of the mountain. Because their God is the God of hills. So let's go to the valley. And then I jumped to verse number 28. As they were now getting ready to fight. Here comes a prophet again. Watch this. Now. Get this, please. Get this now. And the prophet came and he said, Listen to me, all ye Israel. There was a prophecy last year that the enemy was going to come back again. And surely the enemy is coming after you now. But there is something that the enemy said that has given God concern. Because they said he is the God of the mountains and not the God of the valleys. They have limited me to the mountain. It is difficult for them to understand that I am an omnipresent God. I give my people victory on top of mountains and I give them victory down there in valleys. And you are not going to defeat them not only because they are a weaker nation but because their understanding of me is weak. You are going to conquer for the second time the spirit of death that you conquered last year. You will conquer it again this coming year. 